All right, students, so I just wanted to make a quick video on composite transformations. But before we do that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about direct and opposite isometries. Because if we can identify whether it's a direct or an opposite isometry, then we can, it'll really help us in recognizing what type of transformation it is, whether it's a composite transformation or just a single transformation. So what we need to remember is direct isometries are translations and rotations and opposite isometries are glide reflections and reflections. And we'll talk a little bit about glide reflex reflections. So what we can notice here, if we look at the order of the points, the orientation of the points. So here, if you notice this triangle here, the points A, B, C are going around this way, and this would be known as clockwise. If it's a direct isometry, this order is going to stay the same, meaning the orientation of the points. They're going to still continue to go around clockwise. So that would happen for a translation or a rotation. Even if you rotate this triangle, the order of the points are still going to go clockwise. But if it's an opposite isometry, so like a, a reflection or a glide reflection, the order of the points flips. And so a way to remember that is if you think about like if you look in the mirror when you have like letters on your shirt, the letters flip, right? So it's a reflection. So if you can just remember that, if the order of the points flip around, like here it's going counterclockwise, then you know it's some sort of reflection. Now for composite transformations, what we need to remember is it's just like multiplication. So with multiplication, when we have, say, two positive numbers and we multiply them, you get a positive number. If you have a negative and a positive, you multiply them together, you get a negative. Negative and positive, you get a negative. If you multiply two negatives, though, it goes back to positive. And the same works for composite transformations. If you have a composite transformation, if you combine two direct transformations, like a translation and a rotation, it's going to stay as a direct isometry. If you combine, say, an opposite isometry, like a reflection and a rotation, or a reflection and a translation, it's going to stay opposite. But if you have two reflections, and we're going to look at this when we get to double reflections in the next video, is two reflections actually make it a direct isometry. So two reflections can create either a translation or a rotation, which is really cool. So let's look at an example. So here what we're doing is we're going to map figure Q onto figure R. So when I map figure Q onto figure R, the first thing I'm going to look at is, well, let me label these points because it will make it a lot easier for me. So if I label A, B, C, D, E, and then I'm going to label this other figure A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, E double prime. So, and how did I figure that out? Well, A, B, that's this little tiny line segment here, so that's going to be my A double prime, B double prime. And then that's going to go to C, so that's going to be my C double prime over here. And then that's going to go to D. There's my D double prime right here. And then to E. So notice the order of the points. So here, these are going counterclockwise, or sometimes people call it anticlockwise. And then here, this is going clockwise. So it must contain some sort of reflection, right? It has to have a direct and an opposite isometry. So it can't have two reflections, because if it had two reflections, it would be back to a direct. And it can't have, uh, say, a translation and a rotation, because it would still be a direct isometry. So it has to have one reflection. So it looks to me like this figure could be reflected over the x-axis here. This line here. If I reflect it over there, then it kind of looks like it would be the same. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go ahead and reflect it over the x-axis. And there's my A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, E double prime. And then look, I just need to slide it to the left by this translation vector here, which would be, how many units is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's all it is. is it's just a transformation. Uh, it's a reflection over the x-axis followed by a translation to the left five. So let's look at one more example. So here's this one here. We're going to try and map figure K onto figure L, and it's again going to be a sequence of transformations. So let's see here. Hmm. Let's look at the order of the points again. So if I can label these A, B, C, D, E, these are going clockwise. So are these. All right, so it has to be some sequence of, it either has to be two reflections, or it has to be, say, two rotations, or a translation and a rotation, or two translations or something. But it looks to me like it's some sort of rotation, right? So 
I'm going to actually just turn my paper. So this is what, whenever I see like this sort of thing, and now I know it's kind of hard on Delta Math because you can't like, maybe you could turn your computer screen. Um, so if we turn the computer screen, notice like it's actually definitely some sort of rotation because this looks like this figure over here, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. So it's definitely a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise about the point zero, zero. But then I need to actually slide this thing to the right three. So that's really what it was. It was just a translation. It's a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then when we just say rotation 90 degrees, it assumes counterclockwise. But I'm just going to specify that, followed by a translation of the right three. So does order matter here? Well, yeah. And here I'm going to show you why. So here, let's say I've, I did this in reverse order here. Let's say I do a translation to the right three followed by a rotation counterclockwise. Well, let's take a look at that. So we're going to try a translation to the right three followed by a 90 degree rotation. So here's my translation to the right three. And then I want to rotate this figure 90 degrees. Yeah, order matters. It doesn't go to the same place. So be really, really careful with these, um, especially when rotations are involved. Order does matter. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.